Our next selection of footage shows an X-2 being prepared for flight, then moved into loading position under the B-50 launch aircraft for mating. The idea of using a larger aircraft to carry a smaller rocket-powered aircraft to launch altitude was not new. The Bell X-1 had used a Boeing B-29 as a Stage Zero launch platform, and so had the Soviet DFS-346 research plane, which utilized a B-29 that was captured from the U.S. during World War II. A special pit had been constructed for loading the X-1 at Murak Army Airfield. The aircraft would be rolled down a ramp into a shallow concrete pit that was sized specifically for the X-1. Then the B-29 carrier aircraft would be rolled over the X-1, and technicians would then raise the rocket plane into the carrier aircraft's bomb bay. By the time later X-1 variants such as the X-1A, X-1D, and X-1E were flying, it became apparent to researchers that they needed a loading system that offered greater flexibility to accommodate a wider range of research aircraft and carrier vehicles. A system of hydraulic lifts was designed that would allow the launch crew to lift the carrier aircraft several feet into the air, allowing room for the research aircraft to slide underneath. The system was designed so that it could potentially handle future carrier aircraft and research planes. Soon after the X-2 and D-558-2 programs came to an end, a modified B-52 bomber was pressed into service as a mothership for the X-15 program, which used a wing-mounted launching pylon. The pylon arrangement offered much more working room for aircraft loading, so the loading pit and lift systems were no longer needed. The B-52 continues to serve as a launch vehicle at Edwards Air Force Base to this day.